Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Hunter from Mount Asher Photography back here with another video regarding Pixinsight. I have been getting a few requests on a video to help with everything that you need for spectrophotometric color calibration including all of the GIA databases that you need, how to install it inside of your Pixinsight. I also have another video to know how to include any other custom filters to your spectrophotometric color calibration that you may need to help with color calibration in general because SPCC has been proven that it is the best method to use color calibration for your images, especially when it comes to broadband targets. But it is very easy to do. We just have to go on to the Pixinsight website, go under the Downloads tab, and you'll be able to find this page here, the Pixinsight Software Distribution System, and we are going to be downloading a bunch of files. Now, be wary, some of these data sets are very large, especially when you want the complete set we're talking file sizes as much as 70 gigabytes and 20 files in general, but luckily there is a smaller subset that is significantly less for people who do not want to sacrifice, you know, 70 gigabytes of storage on their PC just for referencing for color calibration. I did that myself because why not? <laughs> now, you'll be able to find this through the software distribution interface, and you're gonna go under here, XP SD database files and you're going to find the GIA DR3SP. Now you have the complete set here which has 20 files which one thing I wish they did is just looped them all into a zip file so you can just download one. But you have to download every single individual file and it just takes forever and look at the sizes on here. You got 3 gigs, 3 gigs, little wonder three gigabytes here, 20 files, that's about 70 gigabytes of data. You have to download each one of these individually, or you just go for the small set, which only has roughly about 10 gigabytes, so about seven times less. You can get away with the smaller set. I know people have had no problem with that whatsoever. It just really depends on your personal preference. And when you download all of these, you wanna make sure you put them in a specific file. So like for me here on my D drive, I just have it as Pixinsight Gaia. And then I just extracted them all into this one singular folder. Just it makes it easier to be able to reference it and putting into your Pixinsight a little bit later. So after you have downloaded all of the files, whether the small set or the larger set, we're going to go over to Pixinsight now. And here is the main key you want to take note of. You want to make sure you go into the Processes tab, All Processes, and go down near the bottom to GIA. Now, for the data release, you want to make sure you run under GIA DR3SP, and you want to go down to this little wrench icon here. This is where you are going to be adding all of your files. So we're just going to remove all the ones that I have here just to start from scratch. You're going to hit the select and make sure you find those files that are GDR3SP and you want to load them all in. Hit the open tab, hit OK. Now what I like to do too, to make sure that they are loading properly, is hit this little circle icon. This is going to make sure that it loads it into your Pixinsight so you don't have to worry about maybe being able to, you know, not have it when you're trying to do color calibration. So right there, we have everything loaded in. And when we open up Spectrophotometric Color Calibration, you do want to make sure that your catalog is on your GIA DR3SP. See, like for this, the example, I'm going to use the Crescent Nebula. I haven't done anything to this whatsoever. No background extraction, blur exterminator, none of that nonsense. I'm just going to simply run a spectrometric photo calibration. And this one, I use the Optolong L Ultimate. So we're going to go ahead and select those three for RGMB. 
Just use the ideal QE curve, average spiral galaxy. Now you should be able to drag this triangle over and it will color calibrate your image now based on that database. So it's going to take a little bit of time. You have to make sure, especially one thing, that your image is image solved. Because if not, this process will not work. Because it has to know where in the sky it is to reference these stars so you get the best color calibration. So now that's happened. Let's just go ahead and just stretch the image back here. And you'll notice a nice little difference here. And there we go. Got some nice oxygen here. The hydrogen alpha is nice. And even with just the dual narrowband filter, you got some pretty decent star color out of this that you can continue to adjust going forward. So this is just a very quick, easy video on how to do this since I've had people in the comments been mentioning about this saying that they're having problems trying to load in, you know, be able to do color calibration and they want to use spectrophotometric color calibration instead of just normal, you know, auto color or photometric color calibration, which is pretty decent still, but you still have to have your image image solved in general because if not, it th this process is not going to work. But it has been stated that definitely photometric uh, spectrophotometric color calibration is the way to go and it's just as simple as that so if you want me to go through any other tutorials or inside a pix inside that you're kind of unsure about please let me know i love doing videos like this for the general public because this software is definitely a constant learning curve as we all found out so have any other suggestions Leave a like, a comment down below, su uh, subscribe to the channel. It really does help me, helps grow the channel even more, and kind of, you know, helps me be motivated to help you guys. Thank you as always. Not sure when the next time we're going to be able to do some imaging. We are expecting a lot of rain next week, unfortunately. So hopefully we'll be back to imaging yet again because we got a wonderful target region that I'm using right now for my rockin' on. That is going to be incredible. So thank you as always. Clear skies, and I'll see you next time.